Thank you, Seth and Donna. Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Noring. I'm a cloud advocate with Microsoft. You can find me on Twitter at Chris underscore Noring. We're here today to talk about Node.js. What is Node.js and how could I be using Visual Studio Code with it? Well, let's find out. So first off, what is Node? I mean, it's JavaScript, right? It's JavaScript on the back end. So Node is an open source uh, server environment. It runs on all the platforms you might possibly have, such as Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac, you know the drill. So Node.js uses JavaScript on the server, and that's important to emphasize, JavaScript. I'm about to show you a lot of code examples, so you'll know by the end of this presentation how you could get started and how you could actually learn to test your applications, because you do test them, all right? No? All right. One of the first things you want to encounter or, or play with as you start with Node is something called a REPL. Now, a REPL stands for Read, Eval, Print, Loop, and, and it's essentially a built-in piece of software that allows you to uh, evaluate different statements that you type. So you know what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. But hey, don't I need an editor for that? Well, you can use the REPL instead while you build out your knowledge when you're super young and, and super fresh using Node. Here's what it looks like. By just typing Node in your terminal, it starts to REPL. First thing is that the REPL is gonna tell you, hey, I'm this and this version of Node. This may vary depending on your computer. Uh, once you do that, you get this prompt and you can start typing uh, different statements such as one plus one, and you can see that, that that evaluates to two. Makes sense. It's not lying about arithmetic, am I right? Now the thing you can do is to actually define a variable and then you can echo that variable out and make sure that it's been correctly assigned just as you planned it. One thing that I use a REPL for is actually regex or regular expressions. Those are really, really handy. Uh, you might have used those in other code languages or, or platforms other than Node, but essentially regular expressions allows you to pattern match different things. And it's super good if you try to parse through a text file and yank out that piece of data or just switch this for that. So here I'm typing one of these patterns and I'm able to say like, hey, if I type A, A, B, B, does that match anything in the alphabet? And the answer is true. So this is probably my first use case. So even though I'm a pretty advanced node user, I actually start a REPL on occasion. This is not just for beginners. So use the REPL if you just want this quick test and you don't want to fire up a full node application. Right, so let's say I'm not using this REPL. Let's say I'm actually a developer who wants to start using node. How do I start? Well, a good place to start is by creating a file. Here we've named it hello.js and uh, we type some code here on the right saying console log hello world. That's as simple hello world as it can get in node. Next part is that I want to start this application because I have created an application at this point. I mean, maybe you've tried, I don't know, Python or Java or any such language and you think like, hey, no hello world is that simple. I already always had these using statements and these other things. Node is super simple. Look here in the bottom, you see the terminal. The only thing I do is to call this executable node, but instead of just node with nothing, like I did with the REPL, I have to give it the hello.js as the argument. So that means node is treating hello.js as an entry point to our application. And when it runs hello.js, it outputs hello world, just as our console log statement is saying. So that's as simple as it gets. This is how you start, this is how you keep on building your knowledge. Okay, so, so what can I actually do with Node? How, how much can it do for me? Well, Node is a complete system, right? So imagine that you're, you have an experience working maybe with .NET or Java or any such things. You're used to having a set of core libraries. And uh, it's the same thing with Node. Node allows you to work with input and output, allows you to work with path. It has a set of utility functions. You can do assertions. You can work with processes uh, if you have those. And of course you can encrypt and, and decrypt uh, different statements or, or maybe passwords. And you can work with HTTP. And I will show you more about HTTP as we go on in this presentation. And one other uh, very important primitive is that of streams. 
this might not be the first topic that you encounter when you work on Node, but knowing that you can work with streaming pieces of data, ones and zeros that come in a continuous stream is a very powerful thing. So people build big things using Node.js. It's not just a toy language. It's a big framework and it's definitely a really good option for your backend. There are tons more APIs here at the bottom right. You can go to actually nodejs.org slash API and you can see the full list of all the APIs, all the capabilities of Node. Okay, so you started with an application. You wanna move on pretty soon from an application to a project. So a project consists of several files and not only several files, but it has some kind of file, some manifest file that keeps track on all of those files and tell you how they fit together. Uh, and, and once you have this project up and running, you can do more things such as adding external packages that has their own capabilities. So you can easily extend your Node application and with very uh, few lines of code, you can have a web server up and running or, or a, a command line uh, application or, or what have you. Okay, I said project. Okay. In my mind right now, I'm seeing hello.js. How do I take that and, and for it to become a project? Well, we need this manifest file, as I said. This manifest file is called the package.json and there's also another manifest file called the package lock.json. Those are the two files that are kind of added to your project and makes your application turn into a project. And uh, Inside of those files, it has meta information on the project, such as the name, description, keyword, maybe what GitHub repo it, it re is persisted in, but it also tells you what packages that your application needs to run. Let's have a closer look. So this is how you would be scaffolding your Node.js project. You would type npm init minus y, or you type npm init with no flags. So npm init minus y is a way of, of doing this initialization process really fast. What it will do is to answer the default answer of all the questions that comes up in a wizard. This is the way I start because I usually don't want to go through a long wizard and answer this and that question when I don't have the answer. So I just say, hey, give me this package.json file. I type the minus y flag and suddenly I got a few things. So below here, I've just echoed out the content of the package.json that it generates for me. And it, it tells me things such as the name. It takes that from the directory it's in. It gives me a standard version. It gives me an empty description. I need to fill that in at some point. And it tells me what the entry point of my project is. For now, it's hello.js. That's all we have, but we can change that uh, at a later occasion. And then there's the scripts tag, and in there it has a command called test that does nothing. We need to change that at some point as well. And it also has keywords, author, and license. License is a thing you can be changing um, as you go along as well. A very popular type of license is, for example, MIT, if you want people to freely use your library, if, if what you're building is something that you want to share. Now, so as I said, meta information, scripts, and keywords, author, license. Now, npm are two different things. npm is the command line tool that comes bundled with your, your Node.js application, and it allows you to add packages from a global registry, and that one is called the npm registry as well. So two things, command line tool for managing your dependencies, and also a package registry at npm.js, and this makes Node super powerful that all of these packages exist that other people have written, so you don't have to. Now, you would add a package by typing npm install and the name of the package. And then it goes to that registry, that global registry and say, hey, do I have a package like this? If it does, it's gonna download those files and place those into a node modules directory. So at this point, you've actually gained the capability but before you start using it, you actually need to require in that dependency so that you're able to use it in your code. There are two types of dependencies. One is the dependency that you need uh, for production. So when you build your app, you might need a web framework for it to run, but some libraries you might only need uh, during development, such as testing frameworks. I mean, you don't wanna ship a testing framework with your application, but you definitely need it if you're gonna author tests as you build out your app. 
So npm install jest, for example, jest is a testing library, dash dash save dev, that will ensure that uh, what you download ends up in dev dependencies. Were you to type npm install without that flag, it wouldn't end up in a dependencies property instead. So just, just remember here, there are two types of dependencies for production and for development time. Okay, test. I mentioned test over and over again because tests are a very real part of what you do, regardless of whether you're building something in .NET or, or Python or Java or Node, you need to have a test framework because you can't really prove that your code works before you have that. Good news for Node is that there are a lot of test frameworks and test runners that will help you make this work super easy. So uh, the first thing I do is to configure this script section here. So I say, hey, I want to run jest when I type test. And I also want to run or, or define this command called test watch that will run jest in a mode so that it sits and, and listens for changes from me. So when I would be using jest watch all, it would actually run all the tests and it would wait for me to edit the file and hit save. At that point, it says, oh, I need to run again. So that's the difference between these two commands. Here at the uh, terminal, you see how when I run npm test, it's actually going to execute this jest action and it will start looking for files that matches a certain type of pattern. Now, how, how do I actually get started with writing tests? Well, jest is quite forgiving when it comes to what I name things. So one good uh, pattern that you could be using is actually to have this underscore underscore tests directory as a subdirectory to your application. So here you can see at the top level of my project that I have hello.js, which is my application file. And uh, as a subdirectory, I have this test subdirectory and under it, I have a file called hello.js. Now, if we're looking at hello.js here at the top right, I see that I have defined something called the suite. I, I see that because I'm using the describe keyword. And uh, inside of that suite, that group of tests, I have one test defined. And inside of that test, I have an assertion made. So I, I start out here with saying, hey, I have a group of tests. Then I define a number of tests within there. And for each test, I need to define some kind of assertion in which I say A needs to match B. If it does, then the test passes. If it doesn't, it fails. As you can see here at the top right, it will fail because I expect one to be two. And, and well, we can see that that's not going to work. Um, Running this, we see that we get a failure here on the bottom right, and it's telling me exactly what I need to hear, which is you need to adjust your code so your test passes. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, uh, we go into our test and we actually change that expectation to be two to be two. And suddenly I run my tests again and it passes. That's how it works. And uh, I could be running the secondary action. I mean, so far I've been running npm test, right? But, and one thing to know is that there are certain actions in Node.js where I don't need the run command. Um, I can actually omit that. So I could either start my test task with npm run test, or I can omit the run and just say npm test. Here I'm testing my secondary test action in which I want just to become in this listening mode, right? So once I call, npm run test watch, it runs just with a flag and it sits there and waits for me to change the code. And once I hit save, it reruns it. And that could be quite powerful. You want to improve upon this test experience as much as you can, even though just is quite uh, good and your terminal looks quite nice, you want to make it better. Uh, as part of VS Code, you can extend it with extensions and make your VS Code environment as good as you want it to be and, and to fit all of your needs. One extension I highly recommend is the Jest Runner. Have a look at that. Almost 90,000 people give it a, a thumbs up and say, this is good stuff. You should be downloading that as well. So what does it give me? It gives me the ability to actually right click on a test in suite inside of my editor and I can actually see a specific test run. So, so that's, that's all great, right? So instead of just controlling the behavior here via the terminal, when Jest runs, I can actually do all of that from my coding environment and I don't have to go to a terminal. So it's quite good. 
we're going to skip that video. Uh, if you want that, I'm sure we can uh, distribute this slide deck after the fact. Okay, so let's move on. We, uh, we know that we have a testing framework. What do we want to do next? Well, we want to learn how we can build a web app as easily as possible. With Node, there are many libraries that covers each and every single use case you might possibly have, regardless of whether you're trying to build terminal applications or, or you're trying to build web apps or APIs or anything like that. There's so many options. One very popular option for building web frameworks or APIs is Express. So what you do is that you hit npm install express at that point it has downloaded the express framework to our machine next thing you do to actually use express is to type require express so once we've done that we have an uh, access to the express code and we can just call it as we do here on the second line and what we get in return is an application instance thirdly on, on line three we can set a port once we've set a port we can start defining our routes on, on line five so on line five, we're saying app.get to a default, uh, and we can just simply say, if this route is being hit, we're gonna return back some kind of text. All good, right? So require to get express, call express itself to get an app instance, define a port, define our routes, and finally we start to call app listen. And this is a very simple API, but you can build this out with different HTTP verbs as you see fit. So what does a more advanced example look like? Well, you can keep on adding routes here. If, if you're looking at this uh, web application here, you see that one of the first things we do is to uh, call require body parser. What we do at that point is to instruct Express to handle any posts coming its way that is of type JSON. So what we're saying is to Express is that if someone posts a JSON, make sure you listen to that full message, pick it down, turn that into something that I can use within my application. And uh, my line four there is saying let products. And this is a products array containing a bunch of products because we are creating in an in-memory database. Now, whoop, sorry, looking at app post, we see that we define a slash products route and we can also see that we have this rec body. And this is a request object that is being sent to us as soon as someone tries to post towards our API. What we do at that point is to try to dig out a name property and we create this new new product and we can put new product inside of our array. So it suddenly contains all of those items plus this new item. And the very last thing we do is to call rest.json. We instruct a response object to return this new uh, product that we just created. And then we see that we have app.get slash products and we can see that we are returning the entire products list. And uh, yeah, the uh, app get product slash colon ID. This is an interesting one because it's using something called a wildcard. Now a wildcard is simply a parameter that we don't know what it is before you tell us. So product slash colon ID would match any kind of thing that I would type after product slash. So if someone were to type slash product slash one or slash product slash 100, it would match this route. And looking at the implementation, it, we can see that it goes to products find and try to find that particular product item that matches this ID that we are sending in. And we have the app get that re returns hello world. We had that since before. And app.listen is the one that starts up our app. So, so we can see that we quite easily can build an API in almost no lines of code. Very impressive. Going to skip that one. Um, so far, I've, I've shown you how to do testing with Jest, but you might not see how you can transfer that knowledge of, of using Jest to a web app because it's different, right? It's not just sending in a one and a two and it does a calculation. This is actually on the web and it uses a port. And how do I even do that? Well, the solution again is NPM. There is a framework for everything, right? So you definitely want to be testing get slash products. You want to test get products slash one, and you want to test post. Now we're actually going to jump to VS Code, and I'm going to show you how we did this, and because uh, I've already prepared this bit. So in here, we have the app.js, and I've used something called super test. So super test is something that you can definitely require or, or um, 
you can type npm install supertest and supertest is a framework that is capable of testing a web application. So what do we do? We require in supertest, but we also need to require in our app that is situated two levels up. So our app is simply our web app, this one. And uh, what we need to do inside of our test is simply to say, hey, I expect I have some kind of app. And the thing we need to do is to send in the app inside of Supertest. And now Supertest knows all about our application, what port it, it runs to and so on. And by doing so, I get this request um, as a response. And, and once I do that, I can start defining my tests. So at this point, I use this request to actually try to go towards my API and do slash products. And then I get some kind of asynchronous re response back. Note how I use async and await. And I can just check, did I actually get the 200 status? Do I get a body back that consists of products? Uh, and here we have another test in which we are sending in slash product slash one, and it's pretty much the same MO, but I'm testing it towards one product because I am filtering. So I only get one product back as a response. And lastly, here I have this post test. So here I have my request. I post my request to slash products and I'm giving it a uh, payload, um, a product. So I send in this uh, product. I check its uh, return status is 200 and also that the body it gives me back is an uh, actual product that, that, that it has created. And the last thing I want to do is actually to try to do a new query because this time around I expect my products list to contain one more item. Remember, I've actually called this post route that should be creating things. So instead of just getting two items back, I expect three items to come back and then I assert on that as well. And that's as simple as you would actually write these tests. So as you can see, the level of complexity, whether I'm testing that one plus one equals two or I'm testing a web request, it doesn't become so hard because NPM is really helping us and in particular the super test library. And I mean, these tests are pretty easy to, to author. I wouldn't say they're Easy, easy is not a good word, but I, I think you get my drift. It, it doesn't get more complicated than that of a single function that would do a computation. Right, so uh, in summary, I have uh, talked about what Node is. Node is JavaScript on the backend. I've also said that if you don't want to run a full Node function, you could be running something called a Node REPL by just typing Node in the terminal and it can help you evaluate different expressions such as a regular expression that could help you with pattern matching. I've also talked about how we go from being a node application to a node project. We do that by calling the npm init and we can call npm init with a minus y flag for having all the defaults filled in or we, if we don't type the minus y flag, it will prompt us with a long wizard and we can type in the name of the project the different commands and so on. So NPM is both a CLI, a command line uh, application, but it's also a package manager that resides in, on the web that contains a lot of packages that you definitely want to be using. You can extend your application with packages. Just is a good recommendation for a test library that you can use to run tests. And there are some great extensions to Jest as well, uh, as I showed you that you can use to make your Jest testing experience even easier if you don't want to use the terminal and, and just right click in your coding environment. Web apps can be built with a ton of different frameworks such as uh, Express, Koa and, and a lot of other ones, Nest.js being one. Supertest is the library that I showed you that you can easily test your web apps with. So Jest and Supertest, those are two really good libraries in combination with one another. And that was all folks. So uh, over to you, Seth and Donna and take it away. And thank you very much for listening.